Hi everyone, this is Deepika from Cadness. So we have seen how to segregate agricultural and non-agricultural income in case of tea, rubber, coffee and with chicory mixing all those things. But in case of sugar cane, cotton and flour mills, how to segregate agricultural income and non-agricultural income is. So here we have a format for this. So what is the sale consideration? So oh, if I am manufacturing manufacturer of a sugar cane, when I sell it, so what is the amount that I am going to get out of sale consideration minus cost of growing the crops. So what are all the crops that we have grow used for growing, how much cost it, does, it occurred. So all these things if you minus whatever the amount that you are going to get that is non-agricultural income. Sale consideration minus cost of growing the crops. So you will get the non-agricultural income which is taxable. So how to find out agricultural income then? Market value of crops less cost of growing the crops. So that gives you the agricultural income. Market value minus cost of growing the crops. Year sale consideration minus cost of growing the crops. So only this is the difference. Market value if you minus you will get agricultural income. Uh, sale consideration minus cost of uh, growing the crops you will get non-agricultural income. This is what the format to segregate agricultural and non-agricultural income in case of sugar cane, cotton and flour mill. For uh, this is the format. So we are going to see Indian company under section 2 of 26. An Indian company means a company formed and registered under the Companies Act of 1956 or 2013 is called as an Indian company. Besides, it includes the following, a company formed and registered under any law, a incorporation established by or under central, state or provisional act, any institution associated or body which is declared by board to be a company under section 2 of 17, a company formed and registered under any law in force in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, a company formed and registered under any law for the time being in force of union territories of Dodra and Nagra, Havli, uh, Goa, Daman, Diu and Pondicherry. So these are few uh, companies incorporated in India which is tax free. So to segregate this we have a separate uh, uh, def definition for that. So under section. Then we have domestic company under section 2 of 22A. What is this says is domestic company means an Indian company or any other company which in respect of its liable to tax under the act. The as made prescribed arrangement for the declaration and payment of dividends within India in accordance with the section 194. So this is all about domestic company under section 2 of 22A. When we have foreign company under section 2 of 23A, it means a company which is not a domestic company where the control and management is fully situated outside India. So this is all about foreign company. And under foreign company we have many things. Closely held company, a company in which public are not substantially interested are known as closely held company. Widely held company, a company in which public are substantially interested and known as widely held company. Example, company owned by the government or RBI. Then we have section 25 companies. There are companies which are formed only for pricing uh, art, culture, uh, science and not for profit making purpose. Then we have companies without share capital like Bescom, KPT, CL, Mysore, Mudranalaya, then RBI. So these are few companies without share capital. Nidhi or Mutual Benefit Society, company owned by cooperative society, listed company. So these are few companies under section. Then we have few general principle governing assessment of business income so we have few principle to assess the business income first thing is business carried on by the assessee so who is the assessee who is liable to pay tax so business carried on by him will be taxable then business should be carried on during the previous year income of previous year is taxable during the following assessment year Tax incidence arises in respect of all the businesses, legal ownership versus beneficial ownership, profits in case of winding up, 
real profit versus anticipated profit real profit versus notational profit income from exploiting a commercial asset is business income recovery of some already allowed as deduction mode of book entries generally not relevant illegal businesses in insurance receipts losses in intentional to trade so these are few a uh, principle uh, guiding the assessment of business income so then we have few tax rates applicable for the assessment year 1920 for domestic company so all those things we have here so this is all we are going to see in the upcoming videos for more videos do subscribe our academy's youtube channel and press bell icon for notifications thank you